I don't typically do this. I don't really have much of a plan for this video. I have a handful of fragrances here in front of me. Just to give you a little bit of backstory and very, very little backstory. I was sitting here looking out the window at this scene that you're seeing now, just kind of desperately brainstorming. I knew I wanted to film something. And lately I've been just thinking about the state of the community of fragrance videos. I've done videos about it recently, kind of speaking out and I've said my piece and I'll continue to say my piece, but not only do I wanna be authentic and sincere and say what I have to say and be honest about it, but naturally I want it to be heard because I've been putting a lot of time and effort into this channel over the past six years. I have over 600 videos. It's just been a lot. It has been a labor of love for sure and I genuinely love it and I love that it's grown and I'm grateful for those of you who have joined the community, who've joined the Fresh Squad but I feel like I am basically trying to push a boulder uphill in the context of this community, in the context of what people wanna see. And I refuse to ride that boulder downhill, which is the easy thing to do. So I was just sitting here like, man, what can I do? I feel like I've done a lot and I'll continue to do more, but what can I do to continue? So what I just came across is like, why don't you just make a video about fragrances, about this moment, about everything that is currently happening in this very moment in time. I'm looking out this window, it's raining, it's gloomy, but it's beautiful. And I love fragrances and I love to pair my fragrances with scenarios and functions as you probably already know. So I figured why not just pair some fragrances with this very sentiment as closely as I can pair things in terms of what it feels like, in terms of what it conjures for me. So we're gonna dive into that. I have like eight fragrances here in front of me and some of them I've talked about, some of them not so much. Maybe you'll find something new, maybe you won't, but this is not really meant for me to say, hey, these fragrances are amazing. They're going to do these things for you, X, Y, and Z. Go buy them at the links below. There will be links below if you wanna check them out. Some of them will probably be affiliate links because I am trying to continue what I'm doing here. I need to sustain it and that's a big way to do it. Your help goes a long way at no extra cost to you. So you can consider that if you want, but just gonna get these things off my chest and we'll keep it moving. So hope you enjoy, let's dive into it. In no particular order here, we have this one from Precious Liquid. This is called Amber Suede. And frankly, this is probably my least favorite of all of their fragrances. They sent me all of them. They have, I think five or six and they're lovely and they're generally pretty unique. They're great quality, a lot of them perform very well, and they cover a range of scenarios. Now, by saying this is not my favorite one, it's still really nice, and I think this is where it shines. On a day like today, gloomy, overcast, very damp, a day where you would wanna just stay inside, this is perfect for that. This is dry and melancholy. There's something definitely suede about it. It's almost like that feeling the feeling of how the, the texture kind of moves back and forth when you rub your fingers on it. Even the smell, it's not overly ambery in terms of it being sweet. You know, amber can be an accord that contains vanilla and resins and benzoin, you know, things like that. But this is not that kind of amber. There is definitely a warmth here and it is minutely sweet. It's a texture more than anything. Doesn't change very much, not very strong on my skin, but still really enjoyable on a day like today. I wear it for me. That is Amber Suede from Precious Liquid. We do have a discount code you can get. I think it's $20 off a full bottle with the code Justin20. I'm gonna have whatever it is in the description. Up next, from an indie brand that I was introduced to last year. I haven't talked about them in a while. All the fragrances they have are so different. They're so unique and none of them really reminds me of anything, maybe except for one, but it just happens to bear some very slight resemblance with one facet. But this is not that one. This is from Black Cliff Parfum, and this is called Blinding Light. Kind of like looking out into a white out sky like this. I, that's the vibe I get. It is a thick and full and rich scent, almost creamy in a way, kind of like a creamy sandalwood, maybe something bright about it as per the name blinding. You expect something bright. It's more like a creamy, bright, smooth, slightly sweet scent. Again, kind of thick in a way, almost like a white floral vibe. Really interesting, pretty simple, but comes together in a way that's different. 
and it makes it kind of versatile if you want to wear it really for anything at all if you love it perfectly unisex but i think on a day like today it just kind of smells like the sky that is blinding light up next let's talk about a fragrance that unfortunately you will struggle to get if you want to try it and this is coming from the designer house they are known for their leather goods of bottega veneta this is called poor Homme extreme man what a lovely transportive scent again definitely reminiscent of this time of year it smells coniferous in a way it smells kind of damp like damp wood and earth there's something a little bit fresh about it like you do get the freshness of like water on leaves or water on the earth but it's primarily a leather scent you do get quite a bit of soft but present leather no way brash or animalic very smooth very round beautiful quality well crafted anyway perfect for this kind of day but in terms of its real world function, I would call it a pretty elevated scent without being too formal. I would definitely wear it as a signature scent if you're someone who kind of presents themselves a little bit more elegantly, a little bit more dressed up, but not, you know, full suit or anything like that. But it can also work as a great signature for anyone who just wants to have this, again, kind of melancholic vibe. Bottega Veneta Porum Extreme. Up next is coming from Le Labo. This was a gift from my friend JD. You know who you are. It's ironic. When I first smelled this fragrance years ago, this is called Vetiver 46, by the way. I first smelled it years ago on a blotter at a Le Labo boutique, and I loved it. And I marked it down as something I wanted to revisit. I remember revisiting it, putting it on my hand, and not liking it at all. Then JD reached out and said, hey, man, I'm going to send you something. So he sent this to me because I think he had a similar experience. He went ahead and bought a bottle and regretted it and just gifted it to me. So I'm grateful for that. I was surprised. I'm like, okay, am I gonna like this? And after giving it a full wearing, which as I did in a whole video, you can check out here, you cannot judge a fragrance by spraying it on your hand and smelling it like that and saying, I like it or I don't like it. Cause you're not gonna wear it like that. We don't wear fragrance on our nostrils, right? So. You smelling it like this is not how you're gonna smell it in the real world. It's gonna waft, it's gonna be in the air around you. You're not even gonna smell all of it. You don't get all of the nuances in the air. And that is its true form, ironically enough. It's kind of this introspective vetiver. It is on the smokier side of vetiver. Vetiver can have a lot of different facets. It can be leathery, it can be earthy and woody. It can also be smoky. This is on the smoky side of things. I couldn't tell you what else is in here, but definitely dry, slightly green, woody and smoky, a little bit edgy in that case, but still something pretty relaxing about it that I definitely appreciate and have learned to appreciate more with time. Again, perfect for a day like this. Up next is a brand new fragrance for me. I've only actually tested it, haven't given it that full wearing. I put it on my hand today. I let it waft and I kept track of it for about 10 minutes or so and was really enjoying it. Took a couple close whiffs after I decided I loved it in the air and realized, man, this stuff is beautiful. This is a gorgeous, perfect fragrance for the fall coming from Lark is the name of the brand. And this one is called Argentium. I think the full name is Halo de Lune or something like that, like Halo of the Moon. I don't know. But nonetheless, this is a beautiful, warm, spicy fragrance. At first spray, it reminded me of one of my favorite fragrances, which is from Boise 1920 and it's called Dolce Di Giorno. Warm, spicy cinnamon with a dry woodiness and maybe some kind of dark fruitiness. I was getting that kind of a chord or close, but that's what I smelled. And as I got closer, there was something a little bit edgy about it. And I realized there's a little bit of oud in here that only smooths out as it dries into some amber wood, which is a synthetic, but it adds the perfect nuance to really warm and kind of congeal everything together. Gets a little bit less spicy as it dries. Has a slight sweetness, almost like a natural cinnamony sweetness. Not a real word, but it'll work. Really getting to know it. You'll be hearing more about it. This was sent to me by... Uh, Fragopedia House, I believe is the name of the distributor. I'm going to link them down below, hopefully with a discount code where you can save a little bit of money if you want to check out anything. They do offer samples, I think, of every bottle they carry. So they have a range of kind of off the beaten path niche brands. If you're looking for some brands that no one's really talking about like this one and you want to support a new up and coming business, do check out the link below. 
from a designer house. We had to get at least, well, we got both Tega Veneta. Here's another designer for those of you who get tired of me only talking about niche, even though all I talk about is what I love. And that's just what it's gonna be on this channel. That could be designer or niche. This case, it's designer, and this is Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir Eau de Parfum. And this is a lovely fragrance. It reminds me a little bit of an old school scent from the early 90s. Not that old school, but old school to some of you. Definitely 30 years ago when you think about it. From Cartier called Declaration. And it's like a smoother, modernized version of that. There is a prominent muskiness, this kind of soft, pillowy, semi-sexy muskiness that is reminiscent of this cloud cover we have here. And it does have a bit of a freshness to it, almost a blue vibe like the bottle, but there's something way more interesting about it. It's muskiness and I think some woods and just the soft round overall profile it has is very unlike what you typically expect out of your shower gel, citrusy, fresh, men's marketed designer fragrances, a breath of fresh air in the market. I haven't tried the parfum version. I hear that's a great one as well, but I'm loving this stuff. It's easy to wear. It could be a signature for any occasion if you love it. And I think it goes perfectly for the fall on a day like this. We have one more new fragrance here, and this is one I actually am wearing for the first time today, giving it its first full wearing and really enjoying it. This is coming from a house I've been meaning to try and people have been asking me about them because if you know me, I'm a musician and this house kind of goes hand in hand with music. It's called L'Orchestra Parfum and they call this one Vetiver Overdrive. Wow. These fragrances I find are relatively simple, but they have identity to them. They are a little different from what you have smelled, even though they might remind you in very peripheral ways of other things. Here and there, their overall profiles are a little different down to this beautiful bottle design. Very simple, but still setting itself apart. Vetiver. Vetiver is here, yes, but unlike what we saw in Vetiver 46, this is going to be the fresher side of Vetiver. Almost like what you get out of Tom Ford Grey Vetiver or even Ball de Freak from Byredo. And at first spray, I almost got this like slightly sweet freshness with like a fruitiness along with Vetiver, which reminded me of the Ball de Freak. Overall, a pretty soft and round scent experience. It kind of melds with you and it just almost starts to smell very natural. And it doesn't fill the room or anything like that, but I do find that it persists pretty well on me, but most fragrances do. They do last a while, so your mileage may vary. Nonetheless, I think it's a beautiful scent for this kind of occasion. More to come on it. Again, this is just my first wearing, so I will report back with more, but I can say I'm wearing it and loving it, especially on a day like this. I keep saying that, but that's what the video is about. And our final fragrance, yet another vetiver. I think you know one of my favorite notes here. This is from Javoy, it's called Incident Diplomatique. I've talked about this so much over the years and it's not one for everyone, it's very polarizing. This is very, very earthy, woody vetiver with a bit of this unusual illusion of booziness. There's no boozy notes in here allegedly, but I get something like sticking your nose in a glass of whiskey. The feeling of that, not so much the smell, but it's the feeling of that wetness, almost like vetiver dipped in booze in some way. And there's a bit of a freshness as a result. I think there's some mandarin orange, which contributes to that. But ultimately, it's kind of an ashy vetiver, almost smells like the sweater of a smoker after they've been smoking like the next day. It's weird and that sounds terrible, but trust me, it's really appealing for some reason for me i just love it it captivates me it feels very elegant when i wear it i can wear it out or i can wear it in again on a gloomy day when i'm not going out i might spray this on and just revel in the scent so that is incident diplomatique and that is eight fragrances that go along with not only this day but kind of the sentiments i conveyed earlier i'm always asking and wondering what you guys are actually wanting to watch because i do see a lot of traffic towards some of the aforementioned or not even mentioned but implied a four applied a four implied videos of just the stuff that is taking over the landscape these days that doesn't have a whole lot of substance it's just made to entertain and as soon as the next video comes out it is made obsolete so i want to know what you guys think about that and thank you so much for tuning in peace i'll see you in the next one